Hey, first graders, it's Mrs. Seals back for our next science lab. So last week we started a new unit on force and motion and we were talking about magnets. Today we are going to focus on motion and how objects move. So your target says I can demonstrate and record the ways that objects can move. So remember motion is a change in position of an object. So when you push or pull something, it moves it, it puts it into motion and that changes its position. So um, here are some different ways we can describe how objects move. So look at this picture of this train. Think about how trains move along the train tracks and see if you can come up with a word or phrase to describe the way that the train moves. Here's what I came up with. I came up with that they move in a straight line. That's the way some objects move is in a straight line. What about this one? How could we describe this motion? Any ideas? We call this a zigzag. That's another way some objects move. Think about a football player running or think about when you're roller skating or rollerblading or maybe if you're learning how to ski. All of those are things that move in a zigzag. All right, here's a kangaroo jumping. How could we describe that motion? Any ideas? I came up with up and down. It's jumping up and coming down over and over again. That's its motion. What about when you're in a rocking chair? Any ideas how we could describe that motion? I came up with back and forth over and over. Then we have a school bus and I'm thinking about in particular the wheels. How can we describe the way the wheels move on a school bus or a car or a truck or something like that, a bicycle? We could say that they move round and round. And then we have a turtle. And usually turtles are described as moving slow. And then we have a cheetah. Cheetahs are usually described as moving fast. So there are many other ways to describe how objects move. Those are just some of the more common ones. Um, so here in class, what we're going to do is we're going to use some books to make a ramp. And then I have some different objects that we are going to send down the ramp. And we're going to talk about which objects slide, which objects roll, and then see if we can find something in common between the two groups. If, if this is something you would like to do at home, I would love to see it. You could find some books or other materials to make a ramp find some objects, send them down the ramp, and then describe the way that they move. Again, that's just optional. You don't have to do that. Um, but here's what we're going to do. I am going to I have these big books right here. I'm going to stack them up and use this one for the top and now I have a ramp. So I have all these different objects. As I stated, I am going to send them down the wrap one at a send them down the ramp one at a time. And what we are looking for is to see how they move down the ramp. Some of these objects are going to roll down the ramp. Others other of these objects are not going to roll. And we could call the way that they move a slide. And we're going to sort these objects. We're going to have a pile of objects that roll and a pile of object, objects that slide. And then, the, then at the end, we're going to see if we can find something in common between all the objects that roll and all the objects that slide. In other words, why do the objects that roll roll and why do the objects that not roll not roll? Okay, so we are going to start with a marble. I'm going to send it down the ramp. And let me do it one more time so you can see. Hopefully you can tell that the marble is rolling down the ramp. So I'm gonna put it into my rolling pile. All right, next object is a, hold on, this marble's not gonna stay. There we go, <laughs> paper clip. Let's see how the paper clip moves down the ramp. Hopefully you could see that. I'll do it one more time. 
the paperclip does not roll. We could describe that the way the paperclip moves down the ramp as a slide. So I'm gonna put this in my does not roll pile. All right, my next object is a, like a tube or a roll from toilet paper or paper towel. Send it down the ramp and I'll do it one more time. What do you think? How is the, the roll moving down the, or the tube moving down the ramp? It is rolling as well. So I'm gonna put it with the marble. All right, the next one is a straw. One more time. And the straw is rolling. It's gonna go in my roll pile. Next one is a toy dinosaur. Oh, he's not moving, is he? Let me give him a push. He doesn't really want to go. Let's see that one more time. Definitely not rolling, is he? He goes into the does not roll pile. All right, we have a couple more. Next is a crayon. Hopefully you notice the crayon is rolling. It's gonna go into the roll pile. Couple more objects. Next one is a ping pong ball. Definitely rolling. I have a cube or a block like you would use in math. Doesn't wanna move, let me give it a push. One more time. Definitely not rolling, right? I'm noticing that the objects that roll are moving much faster than the objects that slide. Hmm. Hopefully that's something you notice too. My next object is a feather. Give it another little push. Not rolling, definitely sliding. And then my last one is a Lego. Also sliding. All right, so let's look at our objects that I have sorted. Here are my objects that did not roll. I have my Lego, my feather, my cube, my dinosaur, and my paperclip. These are the objects that did not roll. Then we have the objects that did roll. I have my tube, my straw, my ping pong ball, my crayon. Whoops, they're rolling so much. They're already, they're still rolling right now. And my marble. So these are the objects that did not roll. These are the objects that did roll. What I'd like for you to do is take a minute or two and see what you can come up with. So in other words, I wanna know what do all of these objects that did not roll have in common? What is the same about them? Or in other words, why did they not roll? And then same thing over here. What do all of these objects have in common? What do they have that's the same that caused them to roll down the ramp? All right, take a minute, see what you can think about. Oh goodness, this marble is ro rolling so much. I'm gonna, there we go. All right, so hopefully you had a little bit of time to look at the objects and think about it. And hopefully this is what you came up with. I notice when I look at all of these objects that roll, I notice that they are all round or they have round sides or round edges. Look at my tube, it's round so it can roll. My crayon is round, it's able to roll. My ping pong ball, my marble and my straw are all round. They have curved edges so they are able to roll. Look at my objects that were not able to roll. Do they have curved sides or edges? 
They don't. They have flat sides or straight edges. So they were unable to roll. And the way that they moved down the ramp was by sliding. So that's the difference between the two sets of objects. In order to be able to roll, an object has to have curved or round sides. Think about the bike, um, the tires on your bicycle. There's a reason why tires and wheels are round and it's because they roll much easier. Can you imagine if your bicycle had square tires? Wouldn't that be silly? How would you even be able to ride your bike? It would be very difficult. The reason that they're round is because round things roll much easier. All right, I hope that you had fun with that investigation and exploring the different ways that objects move. And I will see you next week for another topic in Science Lab. Bye guys.